Okay, this is the third part of sulfur oxides or SOX emission for air pollution. So we talked about different fuels containing S and we said any material that consists of sulfur when we burn them or when we combust them we're gonna produce SO2 and then SO3 which results in SOX emission or uh, air pollution basically so the form formation of sulfuric pollutants during solid fuel combustion here we have fuel sulfur is first heated as you see here fuel dash S it means that fuel containing sulfur so it's gonna produce H2S plus COS plus some other substances depends on what materials inside this compound plus char S so these are like gas phase and this one is the solid base basically uh, so, uh, solid product or basically sometimes you call it ash the residue after oxidation so both solids and gases are produced through this reaction uh, they might have some sulfur content as you see here we have H2S gas phase which consists of S uh, COS which is another gas that consists of C which is carbon O which is oxygen and S is sulfur and uh, the remaining or ash or residue so if you have further oxidation the solid phase part solid phase oxidation the solid phase charged sulfur can be oxidized through the following reactions so we have char S plus O2 can be combined with CO2 it can be combined with H2O so as you see here we're gonna produce when we have combustion or oxidation this is gonna produce SO2 which is one of the sulfur oxides char S plus CO2 carbon dioxide is gonna produce COS which is which this COS if we have further oxidation we're gonna produce SO2 as well and then we have char S plus water is gonna produce H2S and H2S is hydrogen sulfide and hydrogen sulfide when we have oxidation it is gonna produce SO2 as well so let's take a look to the gas phase as we see here the gas phase oxidation gas phases produce produce can further react through the following reaction so as you see here H2S if, we react, if it reacts with oxygen through oxidation it's going to produce SO2 and water SO2 is the sulfur oxide H2S plus CO2 is going to produce COS plus water H2S plus CO is going to result in H2 plus COS H2S plus COS is going to result in CS2 plus water so as you see here both solids and gas phases both of them are making more SO2 or sulfur oxides on the other hand we will have sulfur trioxide or SO3 so we talked about it before we said for SOx emission or sulfur oxides it consists of SO2 and SO3 sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide sulfur trioxide or SO3 another oxide of sulfur is either emitted directly into the atmosphere or produced from sulfur dioxide and is rapidly converted to sulfuric acid which is S2, H2SO4 the oxidation of SO2 to SO3 is usually slow unless the combustion temperature is above 1100 degrees celsius or there are catalysts present to expedite the reaction so if you have high very elevated temperature uh, in the presence of a catalyst we will have SO2 to SO3 reaction very fast so let's have a quick overview of control strategies so there are two basic approaches to controlling SOX emission so first of all one of them is to remove sulfur from fuel before it is burned so it means that we need to prevent SO2 emission before we burn it and also after we burn it the second one so after burning or after oxidation we're gonna have SO2 so we produce and emit SO2 
but we need to remove SO2 from the exhaust gases. So these are the two major strategies. So the first one is called fuel desulfurization. So many crude oils are sour, that is they contain sulfur with a range of one to three percent by weight. So that's why we call it sour. Every, sometimes we call it sour crude oil or sour natural gas. On the other hand, it, sour means high sulfur content as you see here from one to three percent or even more. But on the other hand, we have sweet natural gas or sweet crude oil. It means that the sulfur content is very low. It is less than 1%. So we need to have some processes like fuel desulfurization or something is called, for example, gas sweetening. It means that to remove the sulfur content. So to reduce the sulfur content. So when we reduce the sulfur content, it means that we produce or we emit less SO2 or SO3. So sulfur recovery units uses the process in which H2S is burned to SO2 and then the two compounds are combined over a catalyst to simultaneously oxidize and reduce each other. So we have H2S, H2S plus 3 over 2O2 is going to produce SO2 plus water and H2S plus SO2 is going to produce elemental sulfur and water. What are the sulfur, uh, SO2 removal techniques? We can use limestone scrubbing or lime scrubbing. <clears throat> limestone, we have CaCO3 or calcium carbonate. Calcium car carbonate, when it reacts with SO2, it's going to produce HSO3. And then it means that it's scrubbing. So we scrub it, it we mix it with water, and then we can remove that part. Or we can have lime scrubbing, which is CaO, or calcium oxide. Uh, when we mix it with water, we're going to produce CaOH2. And then CH CaOH2, we're going to remove it. We're going to react it with, because it is an alkaline solution. We can react it with sulfurous acid. So then we will produce CaSO3, which is harmless and which is salt and water. So these are basically two techniques to remove SO2 after we burn them. So limestone scrubbing and lime scrubbing. 